today on FTR TV, we go and check out Exotic Aquaculture Australia. G'day everyone, my name is David Mine. welcome back to First Time Reefer TV and today I'm actually doing a delivery for work just a few metres down the road here and luckily right next door to Exotic Aquaculture so I thought I'd drop in for some essential supplies uh, which allows me to travel across uh, Melbourne now um, but we're down here at Exotic Aquaculture Australia I've been here quite a few times so uh, everyone who is uh, a long-standing member of this channel will know that uh, they have some amazing stock uh, hoarded every single time. I just had a quick walk inside and they've got some beautiful displays in their tank now. T coral tanks are stacked full so they are looking really really prima so I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Now this is part of the Reefstock LFS tour series so don't forget that uh, Reefstock is going to be on August 7th and 8th at the Sydney Showgrounds this year. It's going to be a bigger venue, bigger vendor spacing, some incredible vendors jumping on board so it's going to be a fantastic show and I can't wait to catch up with all of you guys, but let's go for a walk around the store now. So here we are at Exotic Aquaculture, 515 Nepean Highway in Bond Beach. This is a, a really uh, boutique niche store, only open four days a week, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they're the trading times there. And as soon as we walk in, we're just uh, graced with these amazing suspended counter-levered tanks here, which we'll uh, go through in a second, but um, I'll get a lens on now so we can walk around. And this is their flagship display tank, which is absolutely gorgeous, completely stacked to the brim with coral and uh, a really nice open style scape as well. Not too much rock in there and uh, the coral completely filling in all the area there and that is gorgeous now this tank is a water box looks to be like a six foot uh, peninsula tank this is lit up with uh, looks to be a couple of radeon g4s with a, LA, a t5 hybrid system and uh, supplementing with a couple of these orfec blue bars as well so literally nearly every light available under the sun uh, but you can see the results truly speak for themselves. And look at all those Bitcoin tang in there. I'm so jealous of how many yellow tangs she's got kicking about in the tank there. But uh, some exceptional coral in this tank. And the growth formations of them filling in that sort of negative space is fantastic. So yeah. Looking at all the colonies here, some really good mix of colors in this tank uh, between the SPS and it's... Uh, Certainly giving me a few ideas in regards to placement of coral and how the tank's going to grow in for my own personal tank. But, um, a couple of LPS underneath as well, some morphs, the lobophilia, some disc corals, some zoas, and a couple of pieces on the other side as well. But this tank is fantastic. We'll come back in a second. I'm going to get Ben to sort of run through uh, how this tank runs. It's going to be really nice. And then he's got another tank over here, which I thought is really cool. We'll take off the lens, see how that looks. That's not too bad, actually. There's a little shallow mangrove tank uh, with some mangrove sticking out the side there. Some rocks cascading over the actual tank itself, giving it a uh, sort of like a really, um, sort of like a freshwater paludarium per se, but a saltwater version. Uh, but you can see the exceptional growth of the uh, mangroves as well, looking really healthy in this tank and happy. And just some really simple to care for coral underneath, a little cowfish in there as well. And uh, what looks to be like maybe a striped cardinal. But I think that is an extremely unique display. One that I haven't seen in, uh, done before, to be honest. So I think that looks fantastic. But now, We'll chuck on the lens and we're going to walk through the uh, display tanks. Now these are uh, three overhanging tanks, as you can see there, plus the tanks that run along the back wall as well. Completely counter-levered with nothing underneath it. I'm a huge fan of how this system looks. I think it's 
very, very unique and looks very cool. But uh, if we have a look through the tanks now, uh, he hasn't had a shipment for a couple of weeks because, uh, you know, due to COVID, uh, it's been a little bit difficult to get some stock. But as you can see, there's still plenty of good coral here and a lot of cheap, cheap frags as well. Starting from as little as 10 bucks. Uh, you've got some torches here for $75. Some nice SPS frags there for 85. Little five-year pieces there for $25. And look at this gorgeous pair of clowns. They are monsters. Very, very, she's very happy. Got a beautiful, gorgeous pair of clowns. Hello. And then uh, this tank here has, houses all of his hammers. Uh, you can see $85, $75. This one here is pretty unique with splotches of the toxic green on there. This one in the back corner is really nice as well, sort of like a mottled purple and toxic green. Uh, you got another one here that's a gold base with a bit of teal tips. Uh, some gold hammers there that look really nice. No pricing on the gold hammers that I can see. How much are the hammers in the middle rows, Ben? hundred each and they are big hammers for a hundred bucks and looking at pieces like that as well purple tips with the uh, toxic green base this one here is really nice as well for a hundred bucks but uh, some really nice size hammers there for a hundred dollars going and then these are some of the biggest biggest goni um, colonies I've ever seen for a very long time uh, no pricing on those there as well. How much are the gonies, Ben? Uh, one twenty. Eighty. One twenty and three hundred for the red gonies. Not very often do you see big colonies of red gonies like that anymore. So uh, it's good to see more of these big colonies uh, being available in the market rather than getting fragged up. He's got another couple of uh, mangroves sticking out the tank there, and I assume those are actually for sale. 60 bucks each by the looks of it. <laughs> well, these mangroves are not for sale, unfortunately. They are part of Ben's private collection. But uh, hopefully you see more of these available because I think mangroves are so cool. Then you've got the SPS systems here. Uh, he hasn't had a lot of acro in lately, uh, like I said, due to COVID, but there's still some really nice pieces. That one there, that's $75. That one there is also $75. This one's got a little bit of blue polyps coming out of it. Nice bright green acro there. And you got that one there, which is sort of like a Del Fuego. A couple more of those pieces. And then you got the bargain pieces out the side here, uh, $35 each, which will still color up really nicely once they're settled into a tank. And uh, then on top of the colonies, he's got all of these SPS frags kicking up the top here. We'll see if we can get a better shot of them. Heaps of different uh, pieces there. That bonsai acro is really, really nice. Uh, this pink digi here Dad. looks exceptional. Yes, Aston. When are you going to finish the video? We're going to finish the video soon, okay? okay? But usually this system here is absolutely full to the brim with Acro, but as fast as it comes in, it goes out just as fast. Always a line on shipment days when they get here. And then I'm going to try and pan up a little bit to give you a really good view of this tank. It's got a lot of frags in here, so Fastria, Chalice frags, you name it, he's got it. And all different color variations. He's got Zoas. Some Reeks, Morphs, Mushies. You name it, he's got it here. And these are pretty cheap. I'm looking at this piece here. Look how unique that is. And he's got some, uh, some more private collection of his mangroves sitting here. I don't know if I can uh, convince him to get rid of those. Uh, a couple of really nice goni frags at the back corner here. Nice bright pink and some red and some pastel colors in that. And then probably uh, usually my favorite section of the shop is this back tank here that has all of his Micromusa 
trackies and scollies and uh, they definitely don't disappoint this time. So it's a little bit dark, so I'm gonna try and brighten it up a little bit. Got some blaster musa frags in the back corner there, bow bankies, some gorgeous little acan frags that glow and it's got some of the craziest, gorgeous trackies I've seen for a long while. Uh, especially this one here, really lovely and settled in the tank. Nice and huge. Nice frag of a gold chalice there. And then uh, some monster scollies, bleeding apples, wall paints. That one there is really nice and chunky. Uh, big colony of Blastomusa there. It's got some uh, RBTAs as well. But a really lovely collection. As you can see, these tanks make the coal look absolutely stunning. And then if we go from there, here's another display tank that Aston's just standing next to. This is a water box, uh, two foot cube by the looks of it. Is that right, right Aston? No, I, think so. I think so, okay. And uh, just really stacked really nicely with a lot of LPS. Ooh. You see the hammers up the top there, some goniopora, uh, beautiful torches. Uh, red cushion coral there, really uh, nice, unique collection of scolemia. And then some beautiful ricks down the bottom here. Uh, that one especially is gorgeous and huge, they're monsters. Uh, looks like a, uh, an inferno goniopora there. One that's sulking that's not uh, too happy, which hopefully should recover because it's still got a bit of polyps inside. Um, but a beautiful collection of goniopora. Beautiful tank. That looks like it's lit up with a Hydra up the top there. And uh, in regards to products, it's got heaps of products here as well. Uh, the, the, the main man to get vibrant from to control all your algae issues. Some of this LPS uh, Barrier Reef Labs food that I've been using myself at home, which is a fantastic food, which reminds me I should be doing a review about that to show you guys. And he's got his fish systems here. Uh, a bit skinny on fish at the moment. Let's see if that makes a bit A bit skinny on fish at the moment. Uh, but he's got a couple of nice damsels, some chromis, rabbit fish, uh, a stripey, which is great for aptasia control. But uh, it has been a bit difficult to get fish at the moment. And then uh, we go over this side. And uh, all the usual culprits that are on the shelf, aquifers, coral essentials, sea chem, and it's got a couple of tanks and other things as well. A nice TV screen up the top there playing some uh, barrier reef uh, imagery, which I think is very, very cute. But uh, he's got this Marco Rock scape here. And if anyone knows me, knows that I love Marco Rock and I love that people are doing more of this style of scaping. Uh, better than a pile of rocks in the tank. And look at this counter lever on this shelf just hanging out the side there. But that is an exceptional um, style of scape. Uh, nice big boulders in the middle there with the shelves plateauing out. That going in the three foot tank stacked with some LPS and some SPS would be absolutely stunning. Well, that's fantastic. But I am going to get Ben on camera now and Ben is going to quickly run us through this tank. So just let me get your microphone sorted, Ben. Give you this one so we can both talk. I'm really coming into the uh, new age now when I can have a microphone and so can you. Do I need the mask on? Um, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Probably best. Yeah. Um, so man, this display tank is absolutely stunning. I'll get you to walk over there. Can you tell us a little bit about the tank, what equipment you're running on it, and what's your secret to success? Uh, all right, so it's a Waterbox 6026 Peninsula. And start with lighting, we have two Radiant Gen 4s, two Orfex supplementary bars, and the Giesman uh, T5s. Um, so that's part of the secret is getting light coverage from all angles. Heaps um, of light in that. Not, um, it's not overdoing it with, with power, but the coverage is great. So all the little nooks and crannies down on the side are all getting light, which is, is helpful, even the dark spots. Cyphastria and uh, some zoas and stuff underneath 
aren't getting shaded. Um, we'll keep the, the cabinet doors off, but it's a pretty basic system. We run Ciparax noodles. Half of those are aerated um, to encourage different bacteria to keep our phosphates down. Yep, that's also, more phosphate control, isn't it? Aerating the media. Yeah. yeah. Um, it also uh, helps oxygenate the water, but it cleans the media, so it cleans out the pores, which uh -huh. allows the bacteria to do a better job. Yeah. And the bacteria waste and mulm will then go up into the water column, which will then feed the corals. Um, so we have don't really do too much with the filter socks. I might just put in some carbon or GFO if I need to, but I rarely change them, to be honest. Uh, the Cove skimmer, which is a beast. Um, the nutrient control uh, success is a lot to do with the Cove skimmer, the amount of muck that pulls muck out. Muck really gets out of it and looks like a little fuse as well. Yeah, just, we, we've got a calcium reactor that the effluent goes into a little chamber full of reactor media, yep. uh, just to help for that extra buffer, but also into just a bundle of Calerpa macro, mm -hmm. um, which absorbs a bit of the CO2 as well, and just a couple of uh, Tunzi um, awesome. refugium lights. Light system too. Um, and it's pretty messy and pretty hard to see, but that's that's a thick bunch of Calerpa. There's not much room for a refugium yep. um, in the water box sumps, but that does enough for me. Takes out some organics. Do you um, always run the lights? Yeah, 24-7. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kalkwasser in the ATO. That there's the little pump in there that turns on for 30 seconds every 10 minutes okay. to stir the stir the calc. So instead of using a, like an actual calc, calc uh, reactor yeah. or calc stirrer. Yeah. Um, and there's a single channel dosing pump that uh, that doses 30 mil um, every hour yeah. of that RO water. If it's not enough, the ATO will top it up. Okay. Um, so it gives us the, uh, the aeration on your media too. Is that constantly aerated? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if I start dropping down in phosphates, I'll put it on a timer. Yeah. Um, but at this stage, phosphates are pretty much constant at 0 0.03, 0 0.04. Yeah. It seems like calc is the way to go. It's only, I've only really just started the calc washer, but the, this tank runs a really low pH. Well, pretty low pH. Um, so there's, there's a CO2 scrubber in there and then the calc washer, and we ha have a fan that comes on in the shop to get some more oxygen into the shop. Um, but the, the other secret is the, the Cove calcium reactor, um, controlled by the Apex Trident. So the... It's a pretty crazy combo. Yeah, it works, it works really... Uh, I think it's better than using a Trident to control dosing um, because it's a constant dose and the Trident basically throttles the calcium reactor if the, if the KH goes above eight. Uh -huh. So it does, a, it does four tests a day. If it tests under eight, then it'll turn the calcium reactor on full. If it tests over eight, then it'll just halve the rate of the calcium reactor flow. Okay, so can we talk uh, lighting schedule? Uh, How many hours of light? Not exactly sure. Um, comes on at about 9.30 and goes off at about 7.30. Okay, so about 10 hours of light. And there's an there's a hour ramp down and ramp up. Yep, so eight hours of full intensity. Yep. Uh, what water parameters do you chase in this tank? Uh, KH of eight, calcium around about the 420, um, magnesium standard 1260, 1300. Um, salinity is 1026 or 35. Yep. Um, water changes? No, unless, unless something happens. Unless needed? Yeah, um, things happen, you know. Um, there's a, uh, the skimmer overflowed last week, so we did a, I did a 100 litre water change. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> um, but we've got a, uh, there was also another issue with the calc, put too much calc in, um, which is the danger of calc, overdosing with calc. I, I think the, the sump level went down and the, that's before I had the dosing pump, the ATO was actually, Dose in the calc, yeah, um, and as a result of lost, lost half. One, a, I saw one, yeah, half a tenuous up there. Yeah, typical tenuous. You, you look at it wrong, and it'll go. And it'll um, go, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a pretty basic system, except for the Obviously Trident the Apex. The Trident. Um, but it's uh, it's not set and forget. But yeah. I don't really do anything except for check the Apex KH. And biggest thing you learned on this tank. Biggest lesson learned? 
Uh, initially, I was reducing phosphate um, with lanthanum chloride, just a basic pool grade lanth, which I'd used years for, with success. Um, and they had obviously changed the uh, recipe to that. And I had a extremely high barium levels um, and lanth levels, so I was, I was never getting the, the right results. Yep. Um, so that that was a that was a big lesson learned. That was probably I mean. So uh, lesson from that is only use uh, aquarium related products. Yeah, and uh, and try not to go for cheap quick fixes because they're normally cheap for a reason. Or they're, yeah. Um, now other than that, I um, I learned a lesson recently. Was removed all the LPS to create the LPS tank because I wanted it. Uh, more open planned, yep. which is what I originally planned for the tank, but then an addiction to coral means you just keep filling it. <laughs> um, but then I yeah, set up the other LPS tank to, to remove that and then I, li I do like the open, clean white sand. Um, even makes me want to reduce the size of the big bommy a bit. Yeah, good stuff. Now you told me before, unfortunately you don't think you're going to be able to make it to reef stock. Not at this stage, no. It's, well, if uh, anyone wants to put in some pressure on this guy to come to Reefstock and bring some of this amazing stock, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And uh, for all my homies in the Facebook group, let's tag Ben and say, come to Reefstock. Because yeah. we want to see your amazing stock, bro. <laughs> if anyone wants to volunteer to help me cart everything up and close everything and pack it all up, then yeah. Done. So you're looking for volunteers and you're paying send, coral. Send in your resumes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's a, it's a lot of work for one person. Yeah, uh, it a, is. If it was in Melbourne, I'd, I'd do it. Yeah. Um, but just travelling, trip, having a shop, looking after it, uh, yeah. getting away. Just the whole setup of last time was, was crazy. Yeah. Um, and I've got a you know young family as well back here, so. Of course. Um, so for anyone that wants to come and give Ben a hand if he comes to Reefstock, <laughs> send him a resume and we'll get him up there. But thanks for letting me walk around your shop and showing us your tank, no man. Thanks for coming. Okay. You want to tell everyone what the problem is? Yeah. What's wrong? Yeah, hungry. Okay, so this guy's hungry, so I better go get him some food before he gets really upset. But my friends, if you like this video, smash the like button. If you've got any comments or questions uh, about Ben's shop or uh, putting on some pressure when to come down to restock, leave a comment in the com comment section down below. And please consider subscribing because it goes a long way into helping the channel grow. And my friends, until next time, <laughs> peace. <laughs> Thank you.